I'd like to bring the January 21st, 2003 Planning Board meeting to uh, order. Um, you have the minutes of the previous meeting in front of you. Are there any comments or additions or corrections? Ms. Schenk. On page, just an error in a word, on page three, the last paragraph, it says the performance quarantine. It should be the performance guarantee. <laughs> Thank you. Any other comments? Minutes have been presented. Uh, I'll uh, hear a motion may be accepted. So moved. Second. All those in favor, by raising right here. Uh, we have some correspondence in front of us this evening. Um, we have a letter from Mr. and Mrs. Nedwell regarding Hamlin Street permit. We have a skin dated the 2nd of uh, January from the Nedwells regarding the same project. We have a planning board activity report for 2002. We have an article on snouts are out, planning commissioner's all journal. We have three copies of zoning news for the last three months. We have a Maine Shore Stewards newsletter, memo from public works director regarding Leighton Farms. We have a letter from Mr. and Mrs. Howe regarding Leighton Farms. And we've uh, received a copy of a letter to Mr. Fitzpatrick uh, Fitzpatrick Associates regarding a, a sewage sent by Portland Water District. Um, at this time on our agenda, it's not on the published agenda, but it's time of year where we address uh, a change in chairman and vice chair. Uh, do I hear any nominations? David. So I'd like to uh, nominate John Seraldo for chairperson of the planning board. Do I hear a second? Ms. Schenkel seconds at any discussion? All those in favor of that nomination, she'll be raising the right hand. Uh, do I hear a nomination for vice chair? I'd like to nominate Andy Charles for vice chair. Do I have a second? Cheryl, the seconds that all those in favor, she'll be raising the right hand. Uh, the chair and the vice chair for the following year will be Mr. Cheryl as chair and Mr. Charles as vice chair. And at this time, I will turn the gavel over to them and, uh, and also thank my fellow members for the help they gave me this year and uh, the assistance that I received from Maureen O'Mara and her administration. So, thank you. And Mr. Chairman. If I may, I'd like Mr. to Charles, right thank and commend Mr. Griffin for doing a fine job these past few years as chairman of the planning board. Really outstanding. Thank you. Second. <laughs> I believe we all second that, David. Thank you for a very orderly two years. Okay, well, we'll move on to the agenda. Uh, there are two items on the agenda tonight. The first is a consent agenda item involving Cross Hill Lot 63 subdivision amendment. The second item under new business is Leighton Farms subdivision request for preliminary subdivision review and resource protection permit. Uh, we will go to the consent agenda item first. Cross Hill Lot 63 subdivision, subdivision amendment request by Richard Herrera and Brian Dietz to adjust the lot line for Lot 63 located at 1206 Sawyer Road under Section 16-2-5 amendments to previously approved subdivisions. Um, as we all know, a consent 
agenda item uh, we can consider right away unless any member of the board wishes to place it on the regular agenda. Any discussion or comment? David. Based on the submission, I think it would be appropriate to consider it as a consent agenda item. All right. Any other comments? Can I ask a couple of questions of Maureen? Um, Maureen, I would just, just for my public knowledge, and were there any changes in the easements or public right-of-ways? Um, no, the only change that is uh, to wi actually widen the frontage to Lot 63 along a right-of-way, but it won't change any easements or right-of-ways. Okay. Um, any conditions that were placed on? Any effect of any conditions that might have been placed on? No. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Motion, perhaps? Mr. Sherman? A motion for the board to consider, be it ordered that based on the plans and material submitted and the facts presented, the application of Richard Herrera and Brian Dietz for an amendment to Lot 63 of the Cross Hill subdivision be approved as a consent agenda item. A motion has been made. Second. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. All in favor? Passes unanimously. <laughs> Our next item is Layton Farm Subdivision. Request by Paul Fitzpatrick of Wiley Enterprises LLC for preliminary subdivision review and a resource protection permit for Layton Farms, a 16 lot subdivision located off Wells Road. Under section 16-2-4, major subdivision review, and section 19-8-3, resource protection permit. And I believe the applicant is here. Uh, you can introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about the project. I guess that's all right. <laughs> Good evening. Uh, my name is Owens McCullough. I'm an engineer with the firm of Sebago Technics here tonight on behalf of uh, Wiley Enterprises. Also with me today are uh, Joel and Kelly Fitzpatrick, uh, who are the uh, principals of Wiley Enterprises. Um, the applicants have been before the board before under Fitzpatrick Associates. Uh, Wiley Enterprises uh, was created uh, uh, as a result of the birth of their first child, uh, Wiley. So they uh, changed the name to Wiley Enterprises in celebration of that. So um, that's why that name has been changed from Fitzpatrick to Wiley Enterprises. Uh, we're here tonight uh, for a completeness review with the board and to present the Leighton Farm uh, project. Uh, we were last before the board a few months ago at a concept plan level, workshop level really, and we presented um, the concept plan for the project which has essentially uh, been the same but been refined uh, as you see here tonight and in the package that uh, you have in front of you. Um, what I'd like to do is uh, within the package there's a cover letter uh, that really details the proposal and what I'd like to do is just sort of follow that uh, if that's okay. Uh, again, it's a 16 lot residential subdivision. Uh, it's located in the resident B zone which is the mandatory open space zoning. Um, so as a result, the project has been developed around the open space zoning. The project is located off the Wells Road. It's a 10 acre piece, well actually it's about a 13.9 acre parcel of land. And um, it is located right here on this aerial photo. Here's the Wells Road. Uh, this is the Cross Hill subdivision, uh, the Jordan Pond back in here. As part of the project, the road will have, uh, will have a thousand feet of roadway coming in off the Wells Road to a cul-de-sac turnaround. Uh, each lot will have access from that roadway with the exception of the existing farmhouse that's shown on the plan. That farmhouse will remain with the exception of a small outbuilding here which will be removed. A lot will then be created around that, that building. 
the applicants felt that uh, the farmhouse added some character to the project. And if, as you notice, we've actually set the lots, began the lots in about 150 feet or so uh, from the roadway. And that was by design so that uh, we could create some open space and, and sort of provide its own definition for the entrance of the road around that farmhouse. As you come in, uh, there'll be lots each side of the road. Uh, the green that you see represents uh, open space, which will be integrated into it. The open space has been designed to do a couple of things. One, to provide uh, direct access from each of the lots to the open space. And also, there's a, a larger chunk of open space in the back here. And that open space uh, provides a link. There's a CMP corridor through here that has an existing trail system, which will be part of that open space. And then that open space then will link to the other town open space, which was accepted as part of the Cross Hill subdivision. Uh, the Fitzpatricks have purchased or have a purchase sale agreement for this piece back in here, which is part of the Jordan parcel. And I think it provides a, con a link and a continuation of what's around here um, as it starts to maybe move around the pond or in this area. Um, Joel did speak to the Jordans about actually having extending it to have access to the pond, uh, but they did not want to release uh, permission to have access all the way to the pond. So uh, unfortunately, we couldn't do that. Um, as part of the project, it will be served by public water and sewer uh, with uh, water extending from the Wells Road up into the project. Um, there is a letter in there from the Portland Water District for capacity to serve. Uh, there will also be public sewer and the sewer uh, does two things. One, it comes up gravity from here because of the topography. If you stand out on the site, the site slopes generally in this direction towards the Wells Road. And this road will have uh, a grade coming up into the site with a, with a horizontal curve in it. But the sewer will come through here, connecting in through a right-of-way over into the public sewer infrastructure constructed as part of the Cross Hill subdivision. Uh, we've also, in your packet, I think there's a supplemental letter from the Portland Water District uh, indicating that uh, there is capacity within that pump station. The Cross Hill subdivision is served by a pump station, which is right down over in here. And that pump station was designed with additional capacity uh, for the future above Cross Hill. And within your packet is a whole summary of the design behind that pump station. We actually requested the design engineer from the Cross Hill, who was Les Berry of BH2M, to prepare a letter um, going, going through why there is capacity in that system and identifying that there was. Subsequent to that, we actually went to the water district and they took a look at their flow meters into the pump station. The number of units that's in Cross Hill projected that out to full build out, and yes, there is uh, additional capacity in that station. So. We will have capacity to connect to that pump station. Uh, the roadway servicing the project will be uh, curbed uh, with an internal storm drainage system. The storm drainage system uh, will convey down to here where there's an existing farm pond. We're going to do some modifications to that farm pond for stormwater detention. That pond is actually part of the Cross Hill subdivision too. It was an existing pond the Cross Hill uses also for stormwater drainage. We're it seemed logical to do a modification to that pond to take the drainage from our project so that you have one municipal infrastructure because eventually Fitzpatrick's or Wiley Enterprises will offer the road to the town for acceptance along with the drainage and infrastructure. Uh, so we wanted to consolidate it into one pond, one infrastructure, and that's done as part of the design. Um, also, uh, the roadway has a sidewalk on this side that will come up to the cul-de-sac. Uh, one of the comments uh, that you saw in your packet from the town planner was uh, that we do need to have an esplanade between the sidewalk and the curb line, which we will do. Um, but we, in talking with the town engineer, the preference is to push the sidewalk all the way back to the right-of-way line so that you have as much esplanade as you can so that the street trees can go in that esplanade because we are obligated to plant street trees around the roadway, which is on uh, sheet, I think it's sheet four of seven that 
shows the street trees around the, around the roadway. The lot sizes themselves will range in size from about 10,000 square feet uh, to approximately uh, 16,000 square feet. Uh, those lot sizes um, are mandated by the ordinance uh, within the RV zone, uh, which is mandatory clustering. We, lots can't be smaller than 10,000 square feet, and they can't be larger. Well, they can't have an average density greater than 15,000 square feet. So in other words, uh, if you add up all the areas of the lots, divide by the number of lots, we can't have an average density greater than 15,000 square feet. So we have a, a narrow window that we have to operate within in the RV zone, and that's mandated by the ordinance. Uh, this area in the growth plan is identified as a growth area, and hence has been identified as RV and for um, clustered and open space zoning. So we've been very careful to follow that. So you'll find the lots range in size from 10,000, again, all the way up to about 16, oh, well, actually this one goes to 17,4 in size, but the average density is about 14,920 square feet. Remember, we can't go over the 15,000, so we've got as close to that as we can without going over in size. And as far as the layout goes of the road, of the road and the land, the applicants uh, spent a lot of time looking at the lot layout. Joel has been very active in it. Uh, for those of you who may have seen some of his other projects, he's very careful in how he lays out the lots because he builds the houses and, and develops the subdivisions. He does the whole package. Um, a subdivision that was done um, a couple of years ago, uh, Hemlock Hill subdivision, had lots that were uh, 10,000 square feet, basically 100 by 100, and he builds houses to fit the lots. So we, sp we spent a lot of time looking at the lots, the terrain. In fact, this point back up in here is, from, uh, is the highest point in Cape Elizabeth, uh, right up in here. So, and actually, that, that point ends up um, in the open space area. So when we laid the lots out, we laid them out so that there's a road. Uh, and as you look across, Unfortunately, my aerial doesn't go all the way down, but the Spurwink Marsh is down through here, and there's a beautiful field on this side. And these lots, as the houses go in around these lots, many of them will have some very beautiful views down across this, this field and into the marsh area. It's quite a setting. And if we do get a chance, we'd be glad to take the board on a site walk. We've actually staked the center line of the road in, so if the board does want to take a site walk, we can do that. Unfortunately, there's quite a bit of snow, but um, it would be worth going out to take a look at it. We'd be glad to take the board out uh, to show them. Again, uh, the roadway is going to be paved 24 feet in width, curved each side. Uh, we will make the change uh, to have an esplanade and then move the sidewalk out. That way, the street trees can be in the esplanade area. Uh, public utilities, underground electric, uh, telephone, and cable services coming from the Wells Road here. Um, the town's engineer has also done a review, an initial review on this project. Uh, we did meet with them too, uh, which was very helpful. Um, and within your packet is some comments by the town's engineer, uh, mostly looking at the criteria for completeness. And in the checklist they provided, uh, it indicated we were complete with some areas that were not applicable. And then there's also a couple of waivers we are requesting, uh, which were detailed out in the package. Those waivers pertain uh, to high intensity soil surveys, um, hydrogeologic assessments, those sort of things. And those are typically pertain to projects where you don't have uh, public utilities, water, sewer. And the town engineer has actually gone through and concurred or agreed with the request for the waivers, felt they were appropriate uh, in this instance. Um, as part of the subdivision, we are asking for a resource protection permit. Uh, that is necessary because uh, we will be, as part of the detention pond construction in this area in the grading uh, at the end of Lot 2, uh, there will be some wetland impact. They'll be in the area about 3,800 to 4,000 square feet uh, as we work through the final engineering design and details. Uh, that could, could fluctuate a little bit, but um, shouldn't be over 4,000 square feet. That wetland uh, was actually marked, uh, mapped out by the applicant's wetland scientist, Mark Hampton of uh, 
uh, Hampton Associates. Uh, this, this wetland, if you go out there, I think it was probably actually part of the pond. Um, it's all, it was agricultural fields. Um, the pond was man-made in through here. be a swell that backs up into here. So we think at one time, uh, maybe that just from creating the pond, that wetland established itself in the field. But that is the only wetland impact. Again, uh, the road climbs as you move towards the back. Uh, as part of your packet, uh, and as required by the ordinance, we also completed a uh, community impact assessment. Uh, that is a requirement um, as part of the project. The applicants uh, contracted with Planning Decisions, Inc. Uh, in South Portland to complete that study, and that is at the end of your booklet. And essentially what that does is it goes through and looks at the impacts of the project on the community, uh, things like compliance with the comprehensive plan, uh, which it says we do comply with, uh, with the design and the area that we're in. Uh, it talks about utilities, impact on municipal infrastructure, public safety, all of those things uh, that are then, that is a requirement of the ordinance. <coughs> Excuse me. With that, we're here tonight to uh, answer any questions, ask for a completeness review, and hopefully move forward to the next step, maybe a site walk with the board if that's appropriate, and uh, the preliminary plan process. Um, the town engineer's comments in here again uh, concurred that uh, they felt that we were complete. Uh, that the things in his comments were more of an engineering detailed level uh, that we typically work through as we go through the design and it evolves through a preliminary plan and into the final plan. Uh, with that, we're here to uh, answer any questions the board may have. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McCullough. Any uh, questions for the applicant on the issue of completeness? Maybe if you could just sure. just highlight the waivers again you're you're seeking quickly yep. just so we all know. The waivers we're requesting is, and I, I should go back. One of the waivers was uh, for a subdivision plan that it it says that the plan should be drawn at a scale of one inch equals 40 feet. We're requesting to have it at one inch equals 60 feet, essentially so that it all can fit on one plan. Um, it is readable. Um, and it allows us to record one document on one plan. So that's the first waiver. Uh, the second waiver is a waiver for a soils report, high intensity soil survey, and lot by lot soil suitability analysis. Uh, we're requesting that waiver since we will be served by public water, sewer requiring no on site dispoil, uh, disposal or well systems. Uh, we did have the applicants, uh, soil scientists, go out, walk the entire site, map the soils, and prepare a report of findings. Um, on the wetland areas. Uh, in addition, we did do a detailed two-foot uh, on-the-ground topographical survey, which we used to develop the design of the roadways, the utilities, the infrastructure, and all of that. Um, and there is actually a third waiver, uh, which was pointed out by the town's engineer. I'm glad you asked me to go through those because I forgot about that one. Uh, the town engineer pointed out that um, technically, under the ordinance, where each lot line meets the right-of-way, that should have a six-by-six six granite monument, technically by the ordinance. What we've done and what is typical and customary in most subdivisions is at every place along the right-of-way where you have a point of curvature on the road, you put in a granite monument. So those are permanent. Those are there to reestablish the right-of-ways, the meets and bounds of those. At the lock corners, we typically put in an iron pin with a yellow cap on it that has the surveyor's uh, seal and, and number on it. And that gets driven in at each point along uh, of the property lines, front and rear of the old properties. Uh, the town's engineer pointed out that that is customary and that they would support that waiver, uh, provided that we do do the six by six at all the, the uh, points of curvature, which, which we will do and is shown on the plan. Okay. Thank you. Questions? <coughs> have a motion? Just from the town planner's office perspective, the certainly the scale of one to sixty wouldn't be an issue from your end, would it? No, it's it's a very common approach that I mean once you get beyond that it starts to get a little crowded. The board has almost always preferred to be able to see a whole 
project on one plan one whenever possible. David? I think uh, a site walk is definitely appropriate. You mentioned that the center line of the road has been staked out. Unfortunately, the time of year doesn't help us much, but no. I'd really like to see the boundaries of the whole thing sure. in such a way that you can also envision how it ties with the other open space that's mm -hmm. uh, adjacent to it, because some of those little slivers of green don't really constitute open space until you look at what they touch on the other side. I don't know how we do that in the next few months, but I'd certainly like to do it when we can. We would be glad to take you around the property. Um, it, it is, you're right, it is a little tough going, but uh, you know, if members of the board would like to, we'll do our very best to take you around. Well, we'll, we'll talk about that after we vote on completeness we, the uh, site walk, which I believe we should do. Uh, on motion. David? I'd like to make a motion for the board to consider be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Wiley Enterprise LLC for major subdivision review and a resource protection permit to construct Layton Farms, a 16 lot subdivision located off well Wells Road, be deemed complete. Motion's been made. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Uh, can vote on the motion. All in favor? None opposed. Okay, the motion carries. The application is deemed complete. Um, I would echo Mr. Charles's wish that there be a uh, site walk. I think that would be a good idea for all concerned. It's certainly not the easiest time, but we do have to do it within the next 30 days, and I'd be very surprised if all the snow is gone by then, so no. be nice. we'll, uh, we'll give it our best shot. Um, they want to pull out their calendars and see when, when we can do this. How does the board feel about a Saturday morning? In the past, we've done weekday mornings, but I think given the scope of the site walk, that'd be tough. You know, if you want to go to work dressed in what you need to be dressed in. <laughs> That's why <laughs> Saturday morning yeah. makes sense. Um, That's not a problem. Which yeah. Saturday morning? We this Saturday is supposed to be <laughs> below zero, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> we have three Saturdays, the first, the eighth. I'm sorry. Yeah, we got the first, the eighth, and the fifteenth. First, the eighth, and the fifteenth. Right. Are we yeah. ruling out this coming Saturday? Maybe if we wait a little while, maybe some of the snow will help. I think the later the better. Seems I think it's supposed to be in the twenties this weekend. Almost. <laughs> the fifteenth. Uh, okay, Maureen. So what are we dealing with here? No, I have a. I have one of these fancy things. <laughs> um, first is fine. And they, d does it, the applicant have any preference um, on the first? The only, uh, unfortunately, the first I'm away at camp with the Boy Scouts winter camping. So um, I asked Joel, and he asked if I could be here for that. that so. It's a good way to get out of it. If yeah, I know. <laughs> well, yeah, we're sleeping in tents too, so uh, you know, I yeah. <laughs> Um, Fortunately, my son wouldn't let me out. So. <laughs> the eighth? I, I can't make it the eighth. The fifteenth would be the, the next week. Yeah. When's our next meeting? That's right before it, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, that's all right. The warmest possible. Fifteenth, <laughs> <laughs> okay with everybody? Yes. I can't make it then. You can't make it. It's it's too close to Valentine's Day. <laughs> that's right. It's the beginning of vacation. Yeah. Uh, the applicant we, said, if, you know, the first, if if, if that's going to be a problem, he'll, you know, he'll do it on the first and show you around the property line. I'll get some a surveyor from my office or something to attend so that they can take you around the boundary. Uh, uh, most people can go. The first. For the first Saturday of school vacation. 
Yeah, well, that's that's the meeting. We'll oh yeah. Take one problem at a time. Yeah. What are we? Is the first okay with everybody? I can't do it the first, but we're, it looks like we're gonna lose one member. Can't do it the first. And it's always an opportunity to make a separate trip. Yeah, that was my other suggestion. Yeah. I don't mind going on my own. I'm sure Joel would, if is he this had another time, I'm sure he would meet you out there and take you around. Everybody I, I don't think I'm going to be. Oh, okay. I suggest that we schedule the first, and if we determine that week that there's going to be a blizzard or, or <laughs> sub-zero day. I hope not. We have, we have <laughs> other <laughs> Saturdays. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll choose for the first. first okay. That's okay. Right. Um, whatever anybody wants to do early so we get it over with. Yes. Not that. Eight o'clock. Well, yeah. <laughs> Want to do it at eight? eight. Is that all right, Marie? Is that all right? <laughs> what, about what about nine in concession to those who have young children? Nine. All right. Nine o'clock on the first. And what we'll do is the, the road has been <clears> staked. Um, I'll make sure that we flag like the front property corners and. I'm probably going to ask for one of my surveyors to come along so that uh, uh, who did the survey to help take you along the boundary if, if that's what you'd like to see. Can, you can, you're all set, Joel? Okay. Bring snowshoes? Bring, uh, well, probably. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll meet on Wells Road, right? Under the farmhouse, I guess. Okay, February 1st, 9 a.m. it is for the sidewalk. Um, all right, is there any further discussion? We are, we are, should, well, we can talk about this, uh, schedule a uh, public hearing for the next meeting. Does everybody agree with that? To finish the motion. Um, just, is there any further discussion of the applicant while, while we're here? I just thought I'd ask you about the, the issue of the esplanade. Mm -hmm. um, it's not on the plan. Uh, does anyone on the board have any? It, it is a requirement. We can waive it if we so choose. Is that an issue I'd to anyone in terms of? I believe he indicated the they would add it to the next revision. We would, we would add it. Right. But does anybody feel strongly that it shouldn't be part of, part of the plan? Uh, I think it should be. OK. They'd be uncomfortable if they didn't have one. All right. Just so the applicant knows where, where we're coming from. I didn't. I don't remember discussing it at the workshop. So. Okay. Uh, you want to finish up the motion, David? I'll set. Be it further ordered that the above applicant application be tabled to the February 18, 2003 meeting of the planning board, at which time a public hearing shall be held. Motion's been made. We have a second. 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 Made and seconded. All in favor? Unanimous. The motion carries. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thank you. See you on the first. Um, I believe that's it for our agenda. Wow. Motion to okay. adjourn. Mr. Chairman, a motion to adjourn. All in favor? Is it in the trend? Yeah. Esplanade is a